Birgos and Mozo, and we look at the uh, the four brachos that we have, the first three being Dereis, the, the last one being Trabonan, but only the first one seems to be focused on thanking Hashem for um, being the provider of sustenance, right? A provider of, of, you know, what we need from a food standpoint. Um, the rest of the brachos don't seem to do that. So um, it sort of begs the question, what what's really going on in Berchas and Mazon? So without further ado, we'll uh, jump into the Mishnah Chachma, who really um, develops this the, the idea, um, or at least an idea of what's behind um, Berchas and Mazon. So the Meshach Achma, and this is right on the Pasuk in last week's Parsha of, in, in uh, Ekev, uh, where it says, uh, And he starts by quoting the Gemara, where it says, um, We'll just take a quick look at that before we see the, the Meshach Achma quotes most of it, um, but we have it here from, in Brachos Memches, it says, right, that's the Pasuk in Ekev. Um, so, in other words, they're, they're sort of darshaning it out from the Pasuk, all the, the, the three brachos that are der Um And then, um, but then if we jump down, it says, mm-hmm. in the other the fun of Minayin. So we know from this um, from this Pasuk that we have to bench afterwards. But what about making a bracha Rishona, the bracha before we eat? So Amarta, Amart Kavachomer. So that we can learn from Svara. So if you are going to Thank Hashem afterwards, sh- when you're already satisfied, shouldn't you be uh, thanking Hashem for giving it to you while you're still hungry? The, um, the Gemara also, just to take a quick look, um, I think that's just good context. The Gemara also says um, about the brachos, it says, Moshe tikin lishra berchaz azan b'shar sheyarad lahem mon. So the, I guess the, the verbiage, right, the, the lashon of the, of the, Bracha of the, the first brach of Hazan that came from Moshe um, when Hashem brought down the man. Yehoshua tikin lehem birchas aretz. The next bracha was from Yehoshua kevan she nichnesu aretz um, when they entered in. That's when Yehoshua is metak in the second bracha. David u'shlomo tikin bonei Yerushalayim. David tikin al Yisrael amecha ve Yerushalayim yerech u'shlomo tikin al bais hagerov akadosh. Together between David Melech and Shlomo Melech. They were attacking the third bracha around um, building the the base of Mekdash and building Yushalayim. Then a tova metiv be Yavne tiknuha. So tova metiv comes in much later, the time of Yavne, the, when the Sanhedrin was in Yavne. So keneged why uh, haru the that was a uh, metakin keneged haruge betar because of those who died in the betar uprising against the Romans. Right, because um, when all those people died in Betar, they were not allowed to bury them. And it wasn't until much later that, the, um, that they were able to, to bury the dead from the uprising. Um, and so what is Hatova Metiv? Hatov shalohi srichu, right? The the bodies didn't decompose. They didn't become, you know, they didn't rot. Metiv shenitnu lekvura. So on the one end, or I guess, you know, at first they didn't rot, and then that the being a metiv is is when they were allowed to um, actually bury the bodies. So that's hatov a metiv that we're saying about a kosh All right. So that's those are the four brachos. So let's now see how the Meshach Chachma sort of develops um, what's going on with, you know, there's a lot of different ideas that are going on here, clearly. Okay, so he quotes the, the Gemara Brachas, Minayin leberchaz amaz aminatar, shenamar bechulei, ein li leachar lefan of minayin, amart ka vechom rekeshu savim evarekeshu ravil koshakein bechulei, so um, what we just saw. Amar lei, ele berchaz amaz aminatar atar aminayin, so, okay, so that's great. Now we understand Berchaz and Mazen. How do we know Berchaz Torah? Because that's the other, 
that's the other uh, bracha that we make that is actually deraisa. So now we're trying to understand how do we know that? How do we know it's 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 a deraisa to say berachas Torah every morning? So so the Gemara says this is a kavachomer al chayisha mevorich al chayi halim abal lo kol shagin. So it's another al piy we can we can deduce it because if we're going to make if we're going to bench. Um, for something that is just giving us sustenance for the moment, um, then how much more so should we be making a bracha of uh, on Torah, which is chayol maba, which is eternal? So all that comes not gemara brachos. So perak misha meso amar rav yochanan lamadnu berchas Torah laachreha min berchas amazim mekavachom or berchas amazim vechulu meisik sham de bracha shlofanehu who derabbanan vechem bedivrei Torah v'taim enira de ein so all this is coming from Svar. He's sort of just recapping what we've seen. She said, Toda Ubracha Avur Gumul. So what the Mishachach is saying is that when we sort of boil this down, at least around um, around the, the, the brachos, what we're saying is that we're giving praise, right? It's all about saying, um, about being grateful, about being makir tov to a Kodesh Baruch Hu for what he gives us. That seems to be the idea from what we're seeing um, in these brachos, in, 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 uh, in, in the Gemara brachos. Okay. So the, and that seems to fit, I think, with how we understand it, right? We're, it's, it's all about gratitude. That's what benching really should be about, is, is our grateful, our being grateful for, for what we have. So, But the Meshach Achma says, wait a second, it can't be just about that. There's really something else going on here as well. He says something that we have to you know, sort of uh, understanding the psychology of a person. Once we become um, satisfied, in other words, that our, our, our tummies are full, <laughs> we're not hungry anymore, uh, we are much more likely to sort of kick, meaning that we just sort of become a bit more rebellious. Um, how does he know this? This is a commercial cause of, um, Acher says later on in, in, in the same, you know, in, in the Pesukim, says, Achatev savata shachachta sham uh, Shem Hashem Elokecho, Malikrasi Zoni Bishi. So the different Gemara Brachos, but basically what it's saying is that, and this is the quote from the, from the Psukim, is that once we become satisfied, uh, it could also mean that we're becoming wealthy, right? We see that in the second paragraph of Shema. Once we become um, satisfied or wealthy, we have a tendency to become a bit more rebellious and to sort of lose track of where it all came from. So he says, Lachain Siva Hashem is Barach. Okay, so there seems to be another idea here that that we have to try and um, almost, you know, protect ourselves or, or, or force ourselves to take a step back even after we're already satisfied to say, wait, Let's keep in mind where this all comes from. Again, even more psukim about this idea. Let's so more than just giving praise or, or, or uh, expressing gratitude. So it's in order that we prevent ourselves from sort of turning our hearts, from blocking our hearts from the from the uh, paths of from the and and his mitzvahs, right? From getting ourselves off the path. And you might think, you know, why is it the benching was benching after the fact? Um, Birkas Amazon is what's deraiso. Why not when you're hungry? And he says that's really the idea here is that it's only when you're satisfied that 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 you have a tendency to to stray. And so that's why at least deraiso we should we we uh, we have to make the uh, the birchas amazon. Um, but and, and therefore the the bracha beforehand is only derabanan. Okay, so. 
Now what he wants to do, though, is sort of take this idea, because again, if you remember the Gemara, in the Gemara Brachos, we're linking um, our learning of Berchaz HaMazan to Berchaz Torah. So how, do, how does that connection work with the, the, the you know, going down the path that, that the Meshachach is going? So he says, When we're thinking about learning Torah, he says from the beginning, that that's something that um, is also, you know, sort of our own idea that it, we, we get our own pleasure from learning Torah. Shalom Lasas Rav Liknos Chachma could be that we want to just gain wisdom. And if we don't remember, we don't keep in mind that Hashem is, and, and Torah is, um, it really is our life and it's what extends our life. And it's only Hashem, you know, granting us the ability uh, to have, to have wisdom and to understand then then Torah simply becomes a tool, becomes a shovel um, for us to sort of become, um, that, that we can use to, to grow in our own stature and that people look up to us, we become leaders, but it all becomes only because um, of the Torah that we've learned and the wisdom that we've gained. Uh, and it can be used in that negative way of just sort of, you know, for our own cover, for our own um, arrogance. Uh, becomes right. The, the Gemara says that uh, Torah become, can be can be a sama a chaim or sama mavis, depending on how we use it. It can be the elixir of life or the elixir of death, depending on how we use it. So this is the other. Limud that we haven't seen yet, but there's another limud of how we know that we say Birchas Torah every day, Deraisa. The Pasuk in, I think this is in Hazina, right? This is Kishim Hashem Ekra Havugeru Lelokeinu, that when I call out to Hashem, I will attribute greatness. How do I do that? That means I'm saying Birchas Torah. And that, by doing so, it puts me in the right mindset. If I make Birchas Torah before I start learning Torah, it puts me in the right mindset. Okay. And then I remember why, why is it that I'm learning it? And then even though I'm getting pleasure from it, and I, yes, you know, the wisdom that I get, you know, might be used for other purposes. I might still get covered. All that is okay as long as I'm keeping in the back of my mind what it is that I'm doing. Why am I doing it? Moshe Amru. So then he asks, but what about having, we don't make a bracha after we learn. We only make a bracha before we learn. Um, it says, um, And he says, and he's bringing out from different, different rayas here that we don't have to because the Torah itself protects us. We don't have to worry that it's going to take us, you know, that we're going to end up at, at hate or something else. The Torah protects us. We only need to make the bracha beforehand. We don't have this idea of like Berchaz uh, that we're going to get satisfied and then start going, you know, straying off the path. Berchaz Torah is a little bit different than Torah is, uh, is a little bit different, he says. The Torah is a little bit different than Torah is Torah. Okay. All right. But now he, he says something very interesting. Um, so we understand, I think, uh, up until now, um, why we are talking the Gemara, or why, I'm sorry, why Birchaz Torah is the Raisa beforehand, so that we go into our Limud uh, in the right mindset. We don't need to make the bracha afterwards like we do for, for uh, Birchaz Amazon. But then he says, pshita. So there's a Gemara in Erechen that he quotes. Uh, we have it down here. So it says, starfin lezimun kohanim levim v'yisraelim. The Gemara says, pshita, what do you mean? Of course, we know that you know, everybody has, uh, has, that, has that same um, chiyuv as a, you know, it can be mitzdarif in a zimun of, you know, uh, making a, you know, having a mezumun for benching. Kohanim levim v'yisraelim. 
The Gemara says, Pshita, no. The Gemara says, no, we still have to do it because what happens if he's, doing, if he's eating Kadshim, but uh, the Yisrael is not, or, or something else. But the Meshachachma um, takes it in a bit of a different direction. He says, um, the Achli Kadshim Saka Dadachamina, the Achlu Osa Mashar Kaparbaum, the Hakaparahi. So the Meshachachma says, the Havamina was that you would never have to bench after eating Kachim. Why? Because Kachim is not something that is um, physical. It's not something that you're eating because you're hungry and it's a meal and you're satisfying yourself. It's you're being the Chaper. That's the idea of, of, um, uh, of eating the Kachim is you're being the Chaper. So if it's a Kapara, it shouldn't, right, the whole thing is very ruchniistic. It shouldn't be, <clears throat> it shouldn't have the same effect, right? I shouldn't be straying afterwards um, from, from a Gosh Baruch I shouldn't have to worry about it, needing to bench because the whole process was for Kapara, was for something ruchnius. That's the Havamina. Kamash Malad, the Gemara says, no, Be'achad v'savata, amarachmana, v'ha isnehu. In either way, you're still getting pleasure. So when the when the when the Torah tells us uh, that's that's a good Baruch would say no either way you still have to bench. You might think the whole achila itself was a mitzvah, therefore you don't have to. We know that mitzvahs are not given to us for our own pleasure, not physical pleasure anyway. But we're human. So at the end of the day, even when we're eating kudshim because it's mechaper, um, we're still human. It still tastes like a good piece of meat. And, you know, assuming that we had bread with it as well, and that might have been part of the kudshim, depending on what the, <clears throat> you know, what, what, the, um, what the korban was then we are going to get pleasure. That pleasure doesn't, isn't nullified just because uh, it, it's something that's ruchniistic. And that's the, that's the Gemara's Miskana. Again, according to the Meshach Chachma, that's what the Meshach Chachma is saying. That's how he understands the Gemara. Somebody who's no there, if a, I'm taking a netter, I'm not going to use that spring. Um, so we say that in the in the in the cold days you can use, still use that spring for to um, to uh, to dip in the mikvah, um, but not in the warm days because in the warm days you'll, you'll certainly get hana from it, but in the cold days you don't. Um, and he says, So um, here too you still have to bench even after you um, you know even after you're eating kachim. Uh, for that reason. So that's how he understands the Gemara and Erechin. Okay. So up until now, um, he's giving us a little bit more of an insight into Berchas Amazon. Why is it, um, why is it specifically afterwards? But we still don't really understand what is, where, why are all these, you know, four brachos? Um, and again, only the first one seems to be about sustenance. So then he says, okay, V'yish lahavin, Masha Amru Hatova Hameti Biyavne Tiknua or Haruge Betar, the Tsura Hezber, Dao Inyan Prati Yisknu Hachamim Bracha Kvua. In general, he says, we know that the Chachamim aren't metake in something for everybody that's really only applicable to a small group of people. So in this case, we're talking about something that happened in Betar that was only really for those people. I mean, that's only one, you know, it was it was certainly a significant event, but it wasn't something that was applicable to everybody, um, certainly not applicable to everybody at all time, that you'd have this takana, right? It seems like it's a, it was a very specific event in history that only a specific a, a number of people were even involved in. So why was that takana, ha- you know, why was that takana made? So it's the ode, the al shinu yain sarich levorich hatov ametiv. He says the other time that we say hatov ametiv is on wine. That's that's the other example. So why why is that? He says v'zeh pela madu rak al yain. Why is that? So right. So wine meaning that let's say I um, 
you know, a good example is Shabbos, right? So you bring out, let's say you start with grape juice for making Kiddush, but then you bring out a nice wine to drink with the meal afterwards. So you can make, you've already made Bari Priya Geffen, but you can now make Hatova Metiv because you've brought out a nicer wine. Okay. Um, so why is that? Why do we make Hatova Metiv on specifically on wine? So this is Vayin Tosis Pesachim Rosh Berchas Pazah. So now he's really um, starting to expand and say and, and, and uh, develop this idea. He says that really birchas amazon, the whole takana of it of, of, of all the brachos, um, was talking about and, and so Dao developed around the building of a nation, building a, a, of us into the nation of of of, uh, of Am Yisrael. And it happened little by little over time with Hashkacha, with, uh, with God's providence. It starts off Hashkacha Pratis Baman, right? That's we said Moshe was Metake and Hazan because of the, the man that fell in the midbar. The man in the midbar, and over that 40 year period, we were purified by eating the man. Vilamdu muskelas elokim kmaimram lo nidna Torah ella la ochleman. And how much more we know this because Chazal say that Torah was only given to those who are eating man, right? The man was uh, was somehow, you know, some you know was elevating. Bahaya Laham Eretz Vir Shalim, Merikasa Aratz Ves, Amita Shashok and Shemo Allah, he's not even Nisim Ritsufim Tamid. And from there we go right into after the end of the 40 years, we go right into Eretz Yisrael, and over time of being in Eretz Yisrael, we then build the base of Mikdash. So you have this constant flow of, hash, of Hashkacha and of Nisim that are building us up slowly, slowly, and that's how you have the second bracha and the third bracha coming in as we build up as a nation. Amnam. Hatova ha-metiv tiknu al-kiyum ha-umah ha-bodedes. Hatova metiv is different, he says. That is all about the takana of the nation that is uh, wandering, that is, you know, in Galus. Uh, for 2,000 years of Galus, and he says, and it, if it, uh, uh, we wouldn't, you know, we would not be standing, or we're only standing because of um, uh, of the Hashgacha practice of Akash Baruch of keeping us going. And we have to realize that after Churban Bayesheni, we as a nation thought, this is impossible. The Jewish people will not be able to be sustained now. We are going to be destroyed, at least over time. Will be the wander, right? The famous wandering Jew. That's going to be our fate. Is that we'll have no dignity and we'll simply be these these this wandering people. Right? Because this all happened. Why did this mindset take place? Because Beter was that last step. Uh, many of the of of the Shagadoli all of Hayu Muatimbo, right? Of the Gadoli Olam, the the, the Gadoli Israel. Many of them, including Rabbi Akiva and others, really believed that Bar Kocha was, was the Mashiach, was really going to bring it all back. When he was defeated and when that rebellion was defeated, the Jewish people felt defeated. And we were, had this, uh, we felt defeated, but and then <clears throat> when the next, you know, king or a king later on, um, Allowed us, you know, was was uh, was was Gozer that we could finally bury the dead. Could Amr Yerushalmi Tanis Hevinu Ki Yisrael Se Achas Bin Ein Zeivim? The Gemara over in, in the Yerushalmi says we we realize then that we are um, we are one uh, Shepsela, right, surrounded by 70, uh, 70 um, wolves. And it's only Gozer's um, uh Hashkacha through you know the king or through the ruler at that time or uh, whatever powerful people. And we realized that even when right the 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 powerful waves and, and the and the storms surge and it feels like we're going to be destroyed, that then the the wind comes and it quiets the and it quiets the sea.
Uh, that, that's sort of the story of our history. So, and it happens through these non Jewish you know, kings and powerful people, but it's all because of Kodesh Baruch Hu. This is why in Yavne they're Metake and Atova Metiv. This is all about how the nation survives for, in, in Golus um, and the wonder of, of it all. And this is um, what we remember back to, we hearken back to, is understanding our, um, our own history and how Gosh Baruch Hu does not leave us alone, does not leave us to sort of, you know, fare on our own, and that is the idea of, and that's how we mention Hatova Hametiv. So that's how he explains Betar and, and why the fourth bracha of, of Birchas Amozum came about is to remind us that even when everything seems horrible and seems like we are destined for doom, that we see the small miracles that come, you know, come about that we certainly have seen in, in our times as well. But now what about wine? Now, what about tova metiv is being talking for wine? Kize miflos tamim deim asher uma kazu v'ni musim keila asher laham hachitun kmosha marta. He says that it's it also is the is the wonder. It's also the the wonder of us as a nation that we have these um, these specific. Um, uh, um, Things that we do, the 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 mannerisms that we have, the for instance, not just mannerism, but but how we lead our lives, that we don't intermarry. The pasuk says, "Asher Golsa Yehuda." The Medrash and Echa says that our Golus is not the same as a, as when another nation is is, is put in Golus. So when another nation is defeated. And their people are, you know, sort of pushed away from their land and end up in somebody else's land, right? That happens after war. <clears throat> it's very different for us because we can't eat their food. We can't, you know, we can't simply become part of that nation. But for other other nations, they do. They just end up being part of and sort of sucked into the nation that, that, that they find themselves within. It's not as big of a deal for them. It's not really a gullus. For us, it's a real gullus because we're on our own. We're trying to figure out how we survive with kashrus and Shabbos and everything else in somebody else's culture. He says, Once somebody touches our wine, right? A non-Jew touches our wine we can't drink it anymore. We can't, we have to be separated. And even with all this, we are still um, kept, you know, the Kadosh Baruch Hu still keeps us even in the Galus. That's only because of our special right, relationship that we have, that even when we're dispersed, um, that we still have this about. And even in the Golas, right, we said that the Shechina is also exiled with us and he spreads his wings over us. That's Kovan Hashem Yisbarach Yisala. So that is how we're, how we're saved. But that the hint to that is that even in Golas, when we have the struggles that we have, um, that uh, specifically around things like wine and food and other in and, and other areas, the wine reminds us hatova metiv that it's really only Hashem that's that keeps us going, um, even when we're amongst the nations. So that's uh, the idea that the umma is really what benching is all about is keeping us as a as a nation. And the fourth bracha, even when we're in Golos, we still have it.